now to hear the voice of His Excellency Paul Kagame. And I will put it to you, sir. I have been to Rwanda and I have been to Tanzania on occasion. And I don't think that you were hogging up as much of the front page in Rwanda as much as our politicians do. Did you muzzle your journalists? Thank you. Once again, let me also express my congratulations to the National Media Group for their 50th birthday. Why there is not much noise in Rwanda today, even though we are nearing elections, is because we've made our noise so much in the past that uh, we had to calm down and <laughs> <laughs> we have had so many years of making so much noise and not only making much noise but also uh, losing our people where a big section of our population got involved not only in making noise but also in killing. I think we've done enough of that. We are now down to serious business. So we've been... President Kagame, may I ask you on a, on a follow-up? Define serious business so that perhaps we in Kenya might learn from you. Serious business here means we've learned our lessons. We've learned from the tragedies of our history and we've moved on and made sure that the people of Rwanda, the leaders, the civil society generally, all members have come forward and participated in discussing and trying to understand what went wrong in our country for us to have faced such a tragedies. And based on that, in the last 16 years, we've been involved with building institutions. Institutions that will outlive individuals, individuals that caused serious problems in the first place in this history our past history. So it starts from analyzing and debating what's going on in the situation. Second, it has to be the people to take the full responsibility for themselves first, even if they are to receive support from elsewhere. Then Thirdly, building these institutions and build on as we move forward. Thank you very much, Mr. President. I'm going to hear the voice of former President Benjamin Kappa, and I'm going to out him in a public place because he is, in fact, a journalist in President's clothing. At some point in his life, he was managing editor of two very influential Tanzanian newspapers. He was chairman of the Tanzanian News Agency. He's been Minister of Information and Culture at two points in his career. He's traveled as an ambassador and spokesman for his country to Canada, the UK, and maybe my research notes don't bear witness, a third country, but it doesn't matter. But I'm going to say to you, former president. What is the Tanzanian experience? Because again, we hear of Tanzania that somehow, way back when, by astute use of the media, by astute use of the language question as suggested by His Highness the Aga Khan, you managed to create a more cohesive society in Tanzania. Is this correct? Are all things perfect where you come from? <laughs> Thank you, John. I don't know. I think you are very optimistic. I don't think that uh, we are as perfect as you paint us. But let me start also by congratulating His Highness and paying tribute to his vision for having started the National Mission Group. Thank you, sir. And to congratulate the staff over the years 
of the nation and taifa, taifa, eh? taifa leo. Because um, as a traitor to my class, because as you say, I was a journalist at one time, I left the tradition and went into politics. So I am a traitor to the journalistic profession. But I do read newspapers, even so they are villainous sometimes and very infernal. But uh, the nation is the leading regional newspaper. It is, it is balanced, it provokes, but it provokes for thought, not for fun. Why are we so successfully united or building our nation? I think it's because the political leaders and the media, particularly after it was rooted at home, realized that the primary task we had was to build a nation. And these three groups, the political leaders, the media, civil society and NGOs, agreed on a common vision and a common purpose. Doubling double to that, the common language made the task of unity out of diversity much simpler. But I can assure you, our politicians are not as, as, as venal and selfish as they are, other, they, are, they are in other countries, but they also know what their self-interest in is, and they pursue them as vigorously as the others do. So, don't be mistaken in thinking that we are angelic, we are not. Thank you. We want to hear the voice of uh, Professor Wangare Muta Madai. And in the Kenyan context, we know that, um, to put it somewhat euphemistically, she went through a terrible period, and her relationship both with politicians and the media was somewhat troubled. Do I speak on your behalf? Are journalists and politicians your best friends? <laughs> Thank you very much, uh, CB. Uh, let me also uh, join um, the excellencies in uh, congratulating His Highness the Aga Khan and the entire nation group family throughout the region for the excellent work that they have done in 50 years and given us one of the best papers. <laughs> I, I think that um, both the politicians, the civil society, and the press are an extremely important part of any nation. And while we have seen uh, nations that have developed and have oppressed the press, sooner than later, people do get out of that oppression and they begin to fight for the right to express themselves. History has shown us that politicians left to themselves can misuse their power. And it is therefore very important for the people who elect them or whom they represent to be able to hold them accountable. Now, sometimes it is not always easy for the people to know what the politicians are doing in the boardrooms and in the cabinets and in the hidden uh, back doors where we are told that these are matters of secret for the state. It is therefore very important to have a vibrant press that exposes them and helps the public to hold readers to account. In many ways, is. That in many ways is what we were doing in this country when we tried to draw attention to the fact that the, 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 um, the, the politicians, the leaders, who were supposed to manage the resources accountably and responsibly and to ensure that these resources are equitably distributed, they were the ones who were dividing it among themselves. And we needed the press to raise our voices and to have these matters printed. I still remember that not until the nation exposed their locations in the Karura forest did this country wake up to the fact that there was a lot of public grabbing of public goods in, amongst the politicians. 